to two silver amulets from the 7th century B.C. They were found in Jerusalem at uh, the place now occupied by St. Andrew's Scottish Presbyterian Church, just south of Old Jerusalem. The, find, the first find was made in 1979. Gordon France was the supervisor of this dig, actually under the guidance of the director of Gordon Barkey, uh, who wasn't there when the actual find took place. Judith Hadley is the one who actually found the, the silver amulet. She was a grad student at Wheaton, and she's now a professor at Villanova. But one of her colleagues is laying here in what was a tomb. It's a collapsed tomb. It was over him at the time this was originally built. And under where he's laying is a storage area with a number of pots, pottery, uh, various artifacts. And it was in the corner, as Barclay is indicating in the inset there, that this amazing find was made. Silver amulets that were rolled up, but they had inscriptions on them from the Bible. This is from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you and make the Lord make his face to shine upon you. The priestly blessing was what they, the priest wore around their neck. They inscribed this on the pieces of silver, rolled it up, and wore it as an amulet. This is from Jeremiah's time, clearly identified from the pottery as well as from other cultural implications and really not even contested by the liberals. Well, how did they inscribe so, so well on silver? In fact, we found with infrared technology in the last two years much more than what they originally found. <clears throat> Number 6, 24, uh, 25, and 26 were very obvious. As we developed more technology, reported in the New York Times, by the way, just two years ago, Almost the whole chapter uh, of the context is engraved on the back of it. How did they do that? I think we get a hint from Jeremiah 17, where we read uh, the sin of Judah is written down with an iron stylus with a diamond point. It is engraved on the tablet of their heart. Evidently, they were doing some engraving with diamonds at the end of an iron stylus. And so on this, you do have the text. Now, the significance we related to this morning when we're talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls, the documentary hypothesis says these books that comprise the earliest books supposedly written by uh, Moses, the early writers, weren't, weren't written then at all, but written after the captivity. Uh, and this is what the documentary hypothesis is supposed to have proved. And we found then some of the Dead Sea Scrolls that were actual copies of the Paleo-Hebrew, which had to have been written prior to the exile, because that's the only time that style was used. Now, when they found the, the 300 B.C. copies, uh, it wasn't from before the exile, but there were copies of what was before the exile. This was not a copy. This was written before the exile. This was 400 years older than the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it is precisely like the text that we have today. Identical. <clears throat> Two renditions of it and almost a whole chapter on the back side. 400 years older than the Dead Sea Scrolls. That just says the people that have given their faith the documentary hypothesis have made fools out of themselves as they tried to deny the word of God. 